Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com, and this is your I Got the Power Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Fro366, which is sponsored once again by Canon. Last year, Canon sponsored me giving away 365 prints, all printed on the Canon Image Prograph Pro 1000 inkjet printer. This year, they're at it again and sponsoring Fro366, because it's a leap year, so I get to give away an extra print. We are getting super close to picking all 366 winners, so for full sweepstake rules and to get entered for free, head on over to canon.com us slash fro366. First up, do you hate those pesky lens hoods that come with your lenses and wish you could replace them all with one that's universal? No, me neither. Oh, oh, did, did you actually say yes? No. Well, if you said yes, you might be in luck. And, and by the way, this isn't a plug. Introducing the universal lens hood by Covered. <laughs> Covered's Kickstarter states, the universal lens hood is the best way to both enhance and protect your camera's lenses, period. Now you know they're serious when they spell out period and don't just use the punctuation. Basically what they're saying is all the lens hoods that you have that came with your lenses suck and their one size fits all is the best option, period. Oh, oh no, it's just a punctuation. It doesn't say period. In their sales video, they claim there are 247 different uses for their hood, but they wanted to focus on just 10, one of which is that it makes a great Frisbee. I do have to hand it to them because they made a great sales video and so far 4,666 people have backed the project. But in my opinion, you shouldn't replace your lens hoods with this for a few reasons. The universal lens hood takes two hands to put on and stretch around your lenses, meaning you need to put your camera down every time you want to put it on another lens. Since it takes two hands opposed to having a dedicated lens hood already attached and ready to go. Now I guess you could buy one for every lens that you have, but that kind of defeats the purpose, being that it's universal, period. Also, it wobbles. Look, I'm wobbling. What if you're on a boat? I'm on a boat! Or you're on the move trying to get the shot and the hood is wobbling into your shot. Now I'm not even talking about running, I'm talking about simply walking backwards while photographing. The potential for the lens hood to get in the way is totally there. With that said, the only practical use I personally saw was if I needed to cut back on glare when shooting through a window or something. Now maybe that's reason enough to buy one. Or if I needed a portable water cup. But like all Kickstarters, you won't know if it works until you back it and get it in the mail, or if Covered sends me one to test out to see if that actually changes my mind. Bring. Hey Covered, you can send me an email to support at fronosphoto.com and I'll send you my address. But I do want to finish this story by giving them props for not only blowing their goal way out of the water, but creating a business around photography. Just don't make a clear one that goes on a flash to diffuse light, because Gary Fong won't like that. Next up, who sold the most DSLRs and mirrorless cameras in 2019? Who cares? Here's a spoiler. It wasn't Pentax. Or was it? Okay, fine. It, it wasn't Pentax. According to the Japanese newspaper Nikkei, who did an article about Sony's first decade in the mirrorless market, the numbers might surprise you. Would I be surprised? Or, if I want to get all clickbaity, these numbers will shock you. Period. They took a look at camera shipments by the big Japanese brands in 2019 and of the 8.66 million interchangeable lens cameras shipped through the last year, now that's DSLRs and mirrorless cameras by the way, the numbers looked kind of like this, and by kind of I mean they actually look like this. Canon was in the top spot with 4.16 million units shipped, not sold by the way, followed by Nikon with 1.73, Sony with 1.66, Fuji with 500,000, Olympus with 330,000, and others with 280,000, of which 12 were potentially Pentax. There it is, Pentax in one of my videos. But I couldn't verify that number because their Madeline K didn't return my call. Oh. Hello? 
No, Madeline, I'm not cheating on you with the Pentex PR person, okay? Get over it! It's interesting because clearly the DSLRs were a big deal for Nikon and Canon in 2019, but where it gets really interesting is the mirrorless shipments as 46% of all the shipments were mirrorless cameras, some 3.94 million units. Now at the top of the list by a healthy margin is Sony with 1.65 million cameras shipped, followed by Canon with 940,000. Now keep in mind this number would not include the R5 or R6 just yet. In third place, Fuji with 500,000, followed by Olympus with 330,000, Nikon with 280,000, and others with 240,000. Now let's go back to Nikon for just a second. You're behind Olympus. That's like being behind Pentax. Olympus just sold their camera division because they realized that they suck. But do you suck even more? possible. That puts a lot into perspective because it's not like Nikon has an R5 or an R6 or an A7 IV body ready to take the market by storm. It really does seem like Nikon is staring down the barrel. I've got the power. No, Dan, not that power. And do you want the power that I've got? Well, you can get the power by picking up this limited edition He-Man I Shoot Raw shirt right now at store.phronosphoto.com. For the next week, you will see an instant discount at checkout when you add this shirt. Now, back to fix. Actually, look at my pecs in this shirt. Speaking of Nikon, Nikon Rumors is reporting on a fresh batch of rumors surrounding the potential announcements of a Z6S and Z7S, or is it Z Space 6 Space S and Z Space 7 Space S? Nikon Rumors is calling these cameras an incremental update, which usually is the case when they simply add an S, unlike the D5, because they skipped the S and went to the 6, though the 6 is like an S. Don't. Oh, sick burn. They claim that the cameras will have the same sensors as the Z6 and Z7, and to me, that's fine because they produced fantastic results. You'll see dual speed processors, new battery, USB power, dual card slots, which will probably be CF Express and SD, though we all know that I prefer matching dual cards. There will be 4K at 60, along with other video improvements, updated EVF, and yes, an actual functioning vertical grip with buttons and controls. I wonder who suggested that they do that. It wasn't just me, it was everybody because it was common freaking sense. Now all of this is expected to cost more than the current Z6 and Z7 and be announced around October. Basically, they're announcing what they should have announced two years ago when they first announced their entry into the mirrorless market. I do think they will be hard pressed to sell a lot of these, especially to people who already invested in the Z6 and Z7. Would you upgrade? Would with two Ds for a double dose of this pimping. And finally, Canon Rumors has released new information on the next few cameras we might see from Canon, starting with the EOS C70, which would be the first cinema camera to include a native RF mount. The C70 basically looks like a stills camera body that's been adapted and modified to make it a video-centric body. The rumored specs include a super 35 millimeter 4K sensor, which is the same one that you will find in the C300 Mark III. There will be no IBIS, but there is internal 10 stops of ND, 4K 120 and 2K 180 in 422 10-bit onto SD cards, but there will be no internal raw recording and look a little something like this. Now there's no word on pricing, but if I had to guess, it will come in around six or $7,000. In a second batch of rumors, Canon Rumors is claiming we will see a video-centric EOS R body with the same sensor tech as the R5, but with half the resolution, record 4K 120 without a crop do 2.8K super sampling in super 35 mode and have a newly developed heat sink. Wait, will that sink be sold separately? Because if there's a special sink for running cold water over your overheating camera under it and it says Canon on it, I have to have it. I mean, I already have the special EOS RF fan for my R5. And the final rumor is about the higher resolution R body, which might be 80 megapixels, shoot 12 frames per second for stills, have dual pixel AF and better low light focus than the R5 and R6, and where they get these rumors is still beyond me, but does anyone else think that having 36 different versions of cameras might not be such a good idea? Go GoPro, anybody, GoPro? Bueller. Might not be a good idea, right? And there you have it, that's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo dot com.
See ya.